Good evening, you're watching Eswatini TV News Bulletin at 8, read to you by Notile Sitole. First up, let's have a look at tonight's headlines. The acting Prime Minister has announced a 14-day partial lockdown beginning at midnight on Friday the 8th of January 2021. Government has called for the burial of the dead within three days. Government has called for the burial of the dead within three days of their passing. Public transport will revert back to 80% capacity on midnight, Friday the 8th of January 2021. And now the news in detail. The acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu, on the advice of their majesties, has announced a ban on all gatherings in Eswatini, except for funerals and important COVID-19 emergency meetings in the country. The DPM, who was speaking in a press briefing held at cabinet offices, explained that the severity of the second wave of the outbreak of COVID-19 necessitated this move as well as strengthening the kingdom's personal lockdown. The acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu says in the past six weeks, Eswatini has faced the severity and harsher spell of the second wave of the outbreak of COVID-19. As statistics show that in December alone, 4,120 people tested positive for COVID-19 in the kingdom, while within that period, 139 people lost their lives. The acting Prime Minister says many cases have been recorded of COVID-19 patients who arrive in hospital and who die upon being admitted in hospital or after a short while of being in a health care facility. The acting Prime Minister says it is against this backdrop that government has suspended all gatherings in Eswatini beginning from Friday the 8th of January at 12 midnight. In compliance with Regulation 51 of the COVID-19 Regulations 2020, His Majesty's Government, through um, the Sustained Council of Their Majesties, has taken the decision to strengthen partial lockdown restrictions to disrupt the spread of the virus with effect from midnight Friday 8th January 2021. The elements of the new restrictions include the following. All gatherings of all si uh, sizes are prohibited except gatherings for burials. However, memorial services are strictly prohibited. Funerals are limited to two hours with a maximum of 50 people. Physical meetings when absolutely necessary for f uh, frontline responders are limited to 20 people, beyond which only virtual meetings should be held. On burials, those who have passed on should be buried as soon as possible preferably within three days. The acting Prime Minister says the country's hospitals and healthcare workers are currently overwhelmed by the outbreak of this disease. Our health system is under severe strain from the increasing number of new infections and deaths. Our health workers and frontline staff are constantly being exposed to the dangers of this dreadful virus, virus as they work tirelessly to save lives. We also need to deliberately and vigilantly protect them. Masu, who says movement and gathering restrictions will last for a period of 14 days to break the cycle of infection. He says the public will be updated on developments pertaining to the stance taken by government. For Eswatini TV News, Shengi Wendlovu with Mbongwa Dube in Babane. The acting Prime Minister Timba Masugu says government is working on increasing the number of COVID-19 testing centers across the country's four regions. 
He says the Ministry of Health is working around the clock to ensure that these facilities become functional as soon as possible. Speaking in a press briefing held in cabinet offices in Babane, the acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu assured the nation that the Ministry of Health has rolled up its lifts to prepare logistics and fully fledged operations for more COVID-19 testing centers across the country's four regions. <laughs> Uh, Meanwhile, Masugu urges all employers to increase the uptake of digital working and communication tools to minimize the number of workers who physically go to work. Masugu urges the people of Eswatini to carefully observe and uphold laid down COVID-19 protocols as the surge in the number of infections and subsequent deaths is one telltale signal that not all people carefully observe recommended practice. For Eswatini TV News, Shengi Wendov with Mbongwat Dube in Babane. Eswatini Acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu says those who have passed on should at least be buried within three days while burials beyond that will request or rather will require a permit from the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Ministry of Home Affairs Acting Principal Secretary Ngulle Lamini says the Ministry is ready to assist those who will seek burial permits. The Acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu says people who will attend funerals are expected not to exceed 50. This is one of the ways government is trying to curb the spread of COVID-19 second wave in the country. Masugu says Emaswat, who will fail to bear their relatives, within three days will have to obtain permission from the Minister of Home Affairs. Burials beyond three days after death will require a permit. Burial permissions will be obtained from the regional offices of the Minister of Home Affairs. We urge the officers responsible for the issuance of the permits to be extremely, extremely sensitive and act on the request promptly. The Minister of Home Affairs Acting Principal Secretary Kulego Lamini says the Minister started issuing memorial services and burial permits during the festive season, so they are ready to assist when necessary. However, he encourages Emaswati to conduct burials within three days. And our regional offices are ready to assist all those that have lost their relatives. If they, they come to the regional offices of the Ministry, that's where they'll be assisted to get uh, uh, permits for the burial of, the, of their relatives. Families that will be compelled to bury their relatives after three days will be expected to seek permits in the Ministry of Home Affairs and they are expected to bring death certificates and affidavits stating reason for burials. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune Langamanda, Babane. As effective from 12 midnight on the 8th of January 2021, Private and public local transport will be restricted to 80% carrying capacity. This was revealed by the Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu, where he was briefing the media on the amended COVID-19 regulations. In a statement, the Deputy Prime Minister stated that local freight transport will not operate during curfew hours, which is between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., unless they hold a permit related to COVID-19 supplies and PPE. He says public transport availability will be at 50% or as determined by the Transport Working Group. Private and local public transport is restricted to 80% carrying capacity. 
public transport availability will be reduced to 50% or as determined by the trans transport working group of the task force. The chairperson of the National Road Transport Council, Sitlang Labati, says they accept the changes government has implemented. We are, are aware and of the 80%, we have used it before. We are aware that we sh should use 50% vehicles on the road. We have done it before as well. So uh, the associations, uh, the marshals uh, and ourselves will draft a plan uh, that will be used immediately. Uh, uh, this takes into effect, which is tomorrow. We One would like to uh, assure the nation that we will still be there to ferry them from home to work, from home to hospitals. He says the council is here to discuss ways on how to implement the 50% availability of public transport. Reporting, I'm Lungilela Makakula in Babane. Liquor Association Secretary Tamisha Jago says, as an association, they, re they will ensure that they comply with the partial lockdown regulations issued by the Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu regarding the changes in operations of liquor outlets in the country due to the prevailing difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Following the statement issued by the acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu regarding the partial lockdown guidelines caused by the escalating number of deaths and COVID-19 positive cases in the country, acting Prime Minister Temba Masugu says strict regulations and guidelines in most activities and businesses in the country needs to be followed to minimize the alarming rates of COVID-19 cases in the country. This include the liquor outlets. All liquor outlets will now operate from Monday to Thursday 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and shall be closed on Friday to Sunday. Lika Association Secretary Tami Chachuago says as an association they will make sure that they follow the guidelines issued by the government in order to spare the lives of Emasuati from this pandemic. Uh, one wants to ask, uh, to request uh, the two participants in terms of the liquor trade that is ourselves as the traders and the consumers of liquor uh, to comply with the regulations that are issued out by the COVID-19 and to comply with the immediate statement issued by the Prime Minister. Such a further appeal to government to cut the liquor trading licenses by 50% instead of 100% because liquor businesses also plays a big role in the development of the country's economy. Uh, we had written letters to government to try and request that we at least assist each other. Uh, we are requesting a 50% cut in particular on the issue of the paying of the uh, liquor licensing. So we've been paying for 100%, there hasn't been a change, and we hopefully hope that government will open their doors so that we engage on this one. Be Police Information and Communications Officer Pindile Flagati has aged liquor businesses and consumers to follow the regulations because failing which the law will take its course. We are expecting those who are in this department of food especially those we work with, to strategize on how they're going to do this best. And we as police officers, ours is to ensure that compliance is in its best. Vilagati further revealed that following the strict guidelines issued by the government, the Royal Eswatini Police Service and the Liquor Association will soon hold a meeting to discuss a new strategies regarding the guidelines. For Eswatini TV News, Zotwa Atlamini with Muslim Konda in Babane. The Eswatini Principals Association says it supports the stance taken by the Ministry of Education and Training to postpone the reopening of schools in the kingdom. The sentiments were shared by the association's chairperson, Welcome Mtlanga, in an interview with Eswatini TV journalists. Following an announcement made by the Ministry of Education and Training yesterday that the opening of schools has been postponed due to the second wave of the outbreak of COVID-19, Chairperson of the Eswatini Principals Association, Welcome Umshlanga, says the association fully supports and understands this move because much as education remains a key sector in Eswatini, but the health and well-being of pupils, teachers and parents remain a top priority. Uh, we are hoping that it will not be long. Uh, schools will reopen so that we 
go back and do our work. Uh, right now we are looking towards uh, admitting new students into our schools. So we hope even that is going to happen safely, uh, following the right protocols, so that no one is affected at the end. The Eswatini Principals Association recommends an increased uptake of digital learning tools in schools across Eswatini instead of heavy reliance on physical classroom setups. Online learning is the way to go now. We have said this repeatedly uh, and we are happy that the ministry is in the process of uh, rolling out uh, the provision of free Wi-Fi in schools. It has started, it's going on very well and we are very much thankful. But we are saying let us speed up that because it is the way to go. In another matter, Chairperson of the Eswatini Principals Association says the delay in the opening of schools for 2021 has placed government in a good position to carefully plan and prepare for schools opening. He says during this period, government should be able to make arrangements for payment to schools for the overseas fund, among other funding commitments that government has to schools. For Eswat in TV News, Shengi and Love with Mbongwa Dube in Babane. The World Health Organization Promotion Officer, Dr. Health Promotion Officer, rather, Dr. Kevin Makazange says steam inhalation does not cure COVID-19 because no matter how hot the steam is, it will not reach the virus present in the cells of the infected individual. He says people must also refrain from inhaling steam on a daily basis with the belief that they will not contract the virus as, as this is a myth. Dr. Kevin Makatange says it has come to their attention that people have started inhaling steam with the belief that they will be healed of COVID-19. Dr. Makatange says this is a myth because no matter how hot the steam is, it will not reach the virus present in the cells of the infected individual. He says it is also a myth that when steam is inhaled numerous times daily, it will cure the disease. That's not true. COVID, you get it from the droplets, someone who is talking and whatever. So steaming will not really stop those, uh, the virus from getting into you. We know the preventative measures that we encourage. He emphasizes that steaming does not kill the virus. There is no way that temperature will, that steam will get to those areas where the virus is at that same temperature to kill the virus. So steaming does not kill the virus. So steaming does not cure COVID. He says those who may have mild symptoms of flu and have a blocked nose may use this method. It helps to loosen you know, secretions that are formed when you have infection in the breathing system. Then it helps with your breathing. Mm -hmm. So that's how it actually works. So we don't recommend the use of steaming as a way of curing COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But you can use the steaming to help and assist with your breathing. He urges members of the public to continue to take care of themselves and follow the COVID-19 regulations. Reporting, I'm Lungelele Makakula with Patu Zamsibi in Babane. The Ministry of Agriculture says as the country continues to receive rains in most parts of the country this summer season, farmers should continue plowing their fields using ultra-short varieties and other crops in order for the country to be food secured. This was announced by the Director in the Ministry of Agriculture, Nelson Mavuso, during an interview with Eswatini TV. Since we are now in the middle of this year's summer season, rainfall in most parts of the country are very scarce during the beginning of the summer season, while some parts of the country have received enough rainfall, allowing farmers to plow their maize crop. The country still continues to receive rainfall this January. Director in the Ministry of Agriculture, Nelson Mavuso, has advised farmers to make sure that they plow their fields and grow ultra short seeds varieties and other crops such as beans, legumes, among beans, and cowpeas in order for the country to be food secure during this difficult time of COVID 19 outbreak. We are encouraging farmers that those that have fields that they will plant maize. They should continue planting just for the month of January, especially the ultra short season varieties, so that we can actually boost up the land area that we have planted to maize because it's very critical. It is our staple. We, need, we cannot afford to have a few fields planted with maize because that's our basic. 
Mavuso further warned farmers to be on the lookout of fall armyworm, which has been seen in most parts of the country, and he advised them to consult the Minister of Agriculture and nearest extension officers on how to kill and destroy those pesticides. We are noticing an increase in the uh, areas that are infected, infested with fall armyworm. We encourage farmers to also take care of that pest because it's becoming a serious problem. If the crop is attacked at this very stage and you don't take proper care of it, definitely are going to get zero yield at the end of the day. So farmers are encouraged to notify the extension officers in their particular areas. Then they go out and spray all fields almost at the same time to avoid the pest from migrating from one field to another. Mavuso then appealed to farmers to make sure that they plow all their fields in order for the country to be food secure. For Swatini TV News, Zoto Adlamene with Mosum Konta, Babane. A 20-year-old female, no wonder precious mortar, appeared in court charged with offences of theft by false pretenses that she obtained 28,437 Emalangeni and 81 cents from her victims by promising to buy them hairpiece and clothing. Mortar appeared before the, Bamba the Mbabane Magistrate Court on Thursday. The suspect in the matter, Nogwanda Precious Mota, is facing four counts of theft under false pretense. Three of the counts are that she promised to buy her piece for the victims, but she never lived up to the promise. Mota appeared before Mbabane acting senior magistrate, Sifiso Vilagati. In count one, Mota is charged that on November 26, 2020, she defrauded Betty Zwani, 9,160 Malangeni, while at Mahala Matsapa. The second count, she is charged that on November 20, 2020, she allegedly defrauded 10,024 Malangen from Vumile Paraka while around Babane. On the third count, Mota is charged that she unlawfully took 2,874 Malangen from Busisiwe Tabet at Situashini area. On the fourth count, Mota is charged that she defrauded 597 Malangeni from Sipiwe Tamini after promising to buy her clothes. When appearing in court, Mota was in company of a lawyer, Tulan Sibanze. The Crown is represented by Pilile Tamini in the matter. The Crown wants the court not to grant Mota bail as she is a flight risk. However, Mota's attorney argued that she is not flight risk and she will not escape the country as she is Liswati and her family is in the country. Sibanze says Mot will be available when her case starts on January 22. He says Mot only went to South Africa to buy the items which were ordered by the complainants. Sibanze added that Mot was determined to pay back the complainants, but she can only be able to raise the fund if out of custody. At the time of compiling this report, the court was yet to issue a verdict on the bail application for Eswatin TV News Fortune Langamanda Babane. Good evening, you're still watching Eswat Nini TV News. Now we'll have a look at our sports news. New Mbabane Highlanders player Tepo Matete says he wants to use the experience he got from playing for other teams to fulfill the team's ambition of competing in the CAF competitions. Matete was speaking during the team's training session in Ezulwini. It seems like Mbabane Highlanders are not done recruiting more players as they have added two more attacking players in the form of Tepo Squama Matete, popularly known as Squam. And he played for Baroka FC and Township Rollers in Botswana, and also Spamanda Sangwen, who once played for Orlando Pirates in South Africa. The players say they will use their experience to help the teams achieve their ambitions of competing in half competitions. You can just expect uh, me doing my best in the field uh, and trying to bring something, something different and contributing in the team. Yeah, I mean, I was in Botswana and top uh, township rollers. We went to CAF, and it's, it's 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 one of the biggest stages. So it will be a blessing if it can uh, happen with the uh, Bowen Highlanders. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because I'm in the you aim very good. You put my arms at a friend, and I'm happy. I'm a good team. It was the like Champions League. That's my own goal. Me experience I'm a good team. Uh, no one is shooting. We are good team and cool. South Africa, so Guzangapa, 
I was my expectation, my expectation uh, uh, corner, uh, for it to good. So for me, it's not a big deal anyway, but it's just a bench. The players signed this season long agreement and their head coach Tom Makanya says he's happy with the caliber of players that they are bringing in as they are improving the quality of the team. The team has a decent start to this season as they played the draw and won one game in the opening fixtures of the season. Reporting for Eswatini TV Sports News, I am Patizum CV, Sulwini. That's all for now. Before we conclude, let's have a look at our top stories. The acting Prime Minister has announced a 14-day partial lockdown beginning at midnight on Friday the 8th of January 2021. Government has called for the burial of the dead within three days of their passing. Public transport will revert back to 80% capacity on midnight Friday the 8th of January 2021. That brings us to the end of our bulletin for the evening. Up next is the weather update from myself and the team here at Swatini TV. Thank you for watching. Good night.